we open on a scene of dark space pierced by an olive green marine transport and as it rushes by we enter inside where there is a commotion of clattering and marines getting ready and all that they can see through the tiny window on one side is girders and industrial pipes as they rush past what they know to be Duat Kruma station and pacing up and down, checking, you know, that things are secure and things are, every, everyone is going where they are meant to be, is Lieutenant Farrier. And he checks off a bunch of things on a list and marches up to Sergeant Maddox. Sergeant Maddox, are you all prepared for the disembarkation? Sir, we are prepared. We are geared up. We're ready, sir. This is excellent news. Okay. Well, I believe that um, traditionally it's the sergeant who gives the uh, the all clear before everyone gets to business. So, um, please, if if you could gather everyone. What does Maddox look like in this moment? Um, Maddox looks like uh, he's in command. You would you would look at him and say that's the guy who I would go to 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 uh, see what the situation is, to to know where to go, what to do in the in, in any given moment. He's got uh, <clears throat> uh, I think you could describe it as a thousand yard stare. He's been he's been doing this for a very long time. Not much gets to him. No rattle. But uh, you can tell the reason part of the reason for that is uh, he's a he's a he's a military man. And he will be until uh, the day he dies. And hopefully that day will be on the battlefield or during a mission. So he definitely has an air of experience and authority. Absolutely. And what do you do to get everyone's attention? Well, <clears throat> squad, fall in. Yes, sir. And there's a kind of thunking of boots as various privates of first and second class line up in two separate teams. Well, if I'm not standing in front of the greasiest, dirtiest, fightingest grunts this old sergeant's ever seen I don't know any other squad that's readier than us isn't that right squad yes sir thank you sir alright we've been given our orders go over them one more time our orders are as such Sweep for and secure any surviving civilians on Duakrama Station. Be aware of alien life forms and, if possible, secure a specimen for retrieval. Yes, this might be a bug hunt, but our first priority are any surviving civilians. Lieutenant Churchill, I assume that you are not standing in line? No, I'm standing slightly to the left behind the sergeant with my arms crossed, looking at everybody, sizing them up. Ha having a, an expression on my face that the best way I can describe is just, you cannot read what she's thinking, but not resting bitch face, but just kind of like a politician's face, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So what is she thinking? Oh, she's thinking that she's excited to see what science we're about to uncover that they 
messed up so badly that we needed to come here to sort out the mess that they've left. Hmm. You've heard some things. Heard a couple things. There's a potential for a lot of mess. Or it could all be a false alarm. You just don't know yet. Yeah. I think there's an excitement. There's like that prickle in the air of like, what's going to happen? Doesn't feel bad. It just feels like we're about to take this exciting next step to see what's behind the doors. Maybe uncover something that hasn't been seen before. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? So now the the sergeant has kind of pointed over to you, are you going to take the opportunity to say anything? Or are you s- stoic? I think I take a measured step forward. It was It's very methodical and very calm. And in a quiet voice, I look around at everyone. Preserve as much as possible. Don't just blow something up because it's there. You need to take back what they've done. Looking at you, old man. You hear what she just said? Yes, Sarge. It goes for the rest of you. If you come upon science stuff, you be real gentle with it. Now, when it comes to aliens or anything of that nature, we are to kick its ass only if it's coming for our ass first. Is that understood, squad? Yes, uh, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, question, sir. Yes. What does science stuff look like? Research. You'll find it in the computers. You might find it laying around. Just... You'll know when you see it. Did they really not go over what's... They should be looking for? Sergeant? You gotta... Take them with a grain of salt. They're just grunts. We're here. We're, we're a weapon. You point us and you fire. I'm doing the best I can with what they give me. If you don't understand what science stuff is, when you look at something you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Just like when you were a baby, when you were a kid, you call an adult, and that adult being a superior officer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sorry, yes, sir. Hi, sir. And don't call me, sir. I work for a living. Sergeant Maddox. Sergeant. And. Uh, Private Fantano leans over to you, uh, Corporal Pace, and and just says, I got something he should touch. What are you talking about? My ass. Uh, Oh, 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 well, I mean... Because, because he's, he's a, he's, as an ass, I don't I don't know. What? what the fuck? Knock off the chatter! Sorry, sir. Oh, it's ours. Lieutenant? Is there anything else we need to know about? Anything else that we can help you with? Not at the moment. It's, as far as we know, it's just another bug hunt. So, fight them, but don't chase after them. And just be careful. All right. Careful. It's my middle name. All right. You heard the orders? How long till we got till we dropped off? You uh, hear over the radio from Private Beckett. Uh, sir, we've got about 10 minutes till touchdown. 10 minutes ETA. All right. Apparently we're touching down at the... Uh... Hab bottom floor of the habitat and we're going to work our way up room by room thorough quick precise if you see anything that looks out of order anything that looks like it should not be there or anything that you do not understand you call it in we will be splitting up into teams but that does not mean you can go Fuck your partner in the bathroom. Is that understood? Yes, Sarge. Yes, Sergeant. Aye, sir. And that is when Lieutenant 
Farrier steps forward. Okay, I will be taking A Team. Sergeant Maddox, you are in charge of B Team. Thank you for your words. Uh, and I expect only the best and highest amount of professionalism from you all. That is all dismissed. You heard him. Get ready. Pace, old man. Now that you've been dismissed and you can do whatever you want for the next 10 minutes, what is it you are doing? Well, <clears throat> we're looking around, making sure that uh, all the young bloods, the privates, that haven't had as many tours as me, you know, as much experience to make sure they're all right and almost pissing their pants. Then I'll walk over to uh, Private Fantan. Private Fantan, what the fuck are you doing talking during the parade line? We, we've done this a million times, old you, man. You know what this all just like. It's it's fine. He's like he's not gonna. Well, he's not gonna. He's not gonna tell me off. It's fine. We'll be. We'll all be fine. And, like, then we can go home. Like, I... Don't you think this is all a bit boring? Hey, man. They point me in a direction, I fuck shit up. That's basically what I've done for years now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm here for it, too. It's just, well, that and the paycheck, but... <laughs> the paycheck? <laughs> Not getting paid any other way. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Mm, good lord. You well, must have saved plenty of money on rations over the years. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. Some of them bugs. If they got some of them good bugs down there, mm, we'll cook them up. We'll have a little barbecue before we leave. It'll go a wild time. Them harvesters, mm, goddamn. What? You never had some cooked bug? Surely, surely it's like gross. It just like they always explode when you shoot them with a pulse rifle. There's there's goo I don't everywhere. Put those bits there, you can make a kebab. It'll be fine. Are you, good lord, I swear to God, the you for today have got no understanding or necessity. I'm, I'm, I'm. You know what? I'll give it a go. You fucking right, you will. I'm gonna get me some sorry. I'll get them back down, down them fucking pulse rifles and the fucking engine room and cook us up barbecue. But if I just don't, don't tell, don't tell that that hoity toity Churchill, all right? She have always has a real issue with me cooking up bugs. I've only done it twice, and she's done. Good yeah. Does the uh, if you say you're cooking it on the engine, surely that makes it taste like oil. No, it don't make it taste that. Well, just a bit of added flavor. What the fuck is wrong with you? Jeez. Look, I... I trust you. But not your cooking. We'll, we'll see about this one, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I swear to God. Some people have got no respect for... for uh, terms of service and what have uh, You know who doesn't have to eat? Save us some food. Who? You know, Bro Brooks. Who's Brooks? Private Brooks? And bunk Who's next to him. Who? Oh, you mean the Tin Man? <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Yeah, I don't understand. If we made it a point of authority that everyone comes with one of them robots or whatever. Just, uh, I, I don't know. We just, I suppose they're good at whatever it is they do but fucking hell uh, the moment I need a microwave on the battlefield the moment I'll be happy yeah sure Jesus yeah oh I mean Dex says he's a medic and wait 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 that fucking toaster is gonna sew me up Sewed up Dex mm. got several hey, hey, holes Dax. in him Dex whoa let me, let me see those scars oh uh 
yeah, De uh, Dexter is uh, like pulls up a kind of a sash that was around his midriff and is like, there, there, and there. Um, I'm not pointing fingers, but someone is a uh, itchy trigger finger. So I give the most judgmental look towards <laughs> the F Fantano. Just for fuck's sake, Fantano! I thought I was alone. I swear to God. Well, soon we get this bug hunt done. Oh, soon we can get on to whatever the next thing is. Yep, yep, sounds good to me. All right, um, we got a we got a couple of minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna check my gear. All right, catch later, pace. Now, I'm assuming that you are fully aware that every now and again you get talked about. Hmm. And this is like in the uh, the hangar area of this transport, so it is it is not a silent conversation either. So voices carry in here. You've probably noticed that you know Fantano and Pace were like having a having a chin wag about where you've come from. So, how does Brooks, for lack of a better word, feel about that? Um, he... He's keeping to himself as he's working. And whenever he's prepping for a mission or, or really doing any kind of work with gear, he always sort of works around everyone else. Uh, people can just, you know, walk around in his vicinity knowing that he'll just not be in their way. Um, and so... He kind of is floating around the group. He's also keeping an eye out. He is watching people. He does notice the scar being shown off. Um, he doesn't say anything, but as often happens when he's just keeping to himself, he is smirking a little bit uh, at some joke that only he knows. So you're all kind of apart from everyone else. Are you hovering pro around the edges at all times, uh, but always watching the group, making sure everyone's okay. And are you, are you just watching, or are you preparing anything, or do you already have all your gear ready? Everything's always kept well in order. Even like inside his locker, everything is like neatly stored. Um, but he he was prepping at the same time as everyone else, uh, with sort of smooth practice movements. He knows where everything is, and he knows where everything needs to be, and so it all gets there very neatly and efficiently. Hmm. Um, I think Fantano comes up to you, and he's like, uh, hey doc, um, you know about science stuff, I don't want to get a dressing down from Churchill. If we see any, I can point it out to you. <sighs> Thank you. <sighs> okay. And, you know, maybe, is there anything I should take to protect myself from aliens, whatever, bugs? Well, it depends on what exactly we're dealing with. We have no idea as of yet. As far as I know, we don't have any information about what aliens they must have been housing on the station. So it's hard to say whether we need something light, something armor piercing. We'll just have to see what we find when we get there. It's enough to cause a problem. Uh, well, I mean, I know how to use most guns, so I think we'll be all right. We stay as a group and we follow our training, and it should all go pretty smoothly. Exactly, like Farius said. And watch out for uh, friendlies in lines of sight. Well, if they all got eaten by bugs, then I won't have to worry. I can go full or. Yes, I'd just rather be stitching up injuries as a result of encounters with aliens rather than uh, each other. Right, 
Okay, no, I, I, I get that. No need to rub it in. Uh, okay. I'm gonna... Uh, I think, I think everyone's gathering. Uh, you need a hand with anything? Got anything heavy to lift? Everything's in order. You need anything from me? I, uh... Nope. No, we're all good. He kind of slaps you on the back. <laughs> Just kind of rocks with the motion. Gives a little nod. Let's get to it. Once again. Happy hunting. Same to you. Once again, Lieutenant Farrow comes up to you, Maddox. Okay. Everyone seems to be ready. Uh, if you could do the honours, I will, um... I will check the screens while we land and, uh, prepare everyone for a possibly dangerous disembarkation. All right, everybody! Ready up! Drop your linen, start your grinning! We're about to disembark. Remember, head on a swivel. Watch where you're going, and do not, I repeat, do not fire unless absolutely necessary. We are here to preserve and secure life forms and survivors. So only shoot if absolutely necessary. Is that understood, squad? Yes, sir. Yes, Sergeant. Sir. Private Beckett, uh, we are coming in for a landing. ETA 20 seconds. Everyone get ready. All Sergeant right, Maddox, everyone. you're on the uh, go button. Release the doors whenever you're ready. Roger that. Alright, everyone. Time has come. And release those doors. Whatever you see, remember your training. You are Marines. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. There's a hiss of pneumatics as the uh, the ramp hits metal, and a bunch of Marines in perfect lines, checking corners, checking directions swarm into the loading bay, the shuttle dock, and it's really dark in here. Looks kind of messy from the vague reflections of bits of metal and, you know, waste that's been strewn around. But it is dead silent in here. You get into the uh, the shuttle and wait, uh, waiting and dock uh, at the bottom part of the habitation, which is on one side of this kind of uh, counterweighted research station. So you know that on this end there's uh, habitation and, you know, a canteen and all of that stuff across a beam in the middle connected to the uh, kind of our main artery leading up way way up to the station uh there is on the opposite side a uh, bunch of labs and science stuff and offices and all, all of all of that crap and this is probably uh, a, a pretty large space, so obviously the uh, transport itself is quite large, and it is it's taking up maybe about half of this room. You know, with various storage crates scattered around in here. Um, but everyone kind of swarms out and secures various points of defensiveness uh, around the entrance to the, the transport, and then uh, a couple of people start to slowly creep out into the rest of the room. 
Is anyone going to try anything in particular? Um, as soon as uh, all the Marines are disembarked, um, all the I'm guessing it's just the grunts, the the privates, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, I will. Uh, as soon as I get the, I I feel like they're uh, they're stationed and they're waiting to to move forward. I'll come forward and uh, I hit the the back of my uh, my uh, hat here and uh, a little eyeglass comes down in front and uh, if you want to get technical it's the the Weyland Yutani uh, combat threat assessor and it kind of puts like a little bit of a reading in front of my eye to, to see you know anything that's coming at me and uh, I will I'll do a quick like scan of the area to see if there's anything uh, that I need to make my my uh, soldiers aware of or my mm. marines aware of excuse me they're not soldiers they're marines yeah you uh, you take your your sweet time with this you're being very careful and meticulous and from your vantage point you can't see anything that looks like it's moving or uh, dangerous in any way. The the threat assessor is just kind of has a little uh, crosshair pinging around, searching for things, and it just comes up blank wow. as you scan the entire room. All right, I'm getting nothing here. Um, Private Dexter, Private Pace, or Corporal Pace. Anything in your in your eyeline? Have a look around. Check the vicinity. So, as you move further into the docking bay, you can definitely see the it, it, a bunch of stuff has clearly gone down here. Um, at one end. There appear to be two gurneys with bodies on them. I think that is the first thing you notice. That is basically all the way at the other end. Got two bodies here, Sarge. It's uh, not looking great. Someone went down here. We'll take Dexter up there and go check it out. See if we got a pulse. If not, see if they uh if you can figure out how they how they bought it. Dex, you're with me. Easy goes. Let's let's do this thing. Takes that huge harness and like adjusts it and moves his smart gun into a kind of forward facing position. Ugh, right. I'll Dead take the lead. Was my six. Oh. Oh. I swear oh, you to God, if you shoot me, I'm going to ruin you. <laughs> and then I will right, fix well, it. they're going to do that. Beckett, you and Fantano, you get that door. Secure that door. Make sure there's nothing sneaking up on us. Uh, Win. Brooks, you get the other opening. Just want to know if there's anything lurking out there in the doorway. I, I want to secure this room as our operating base for the time being, if we can. Absolutely, Sarge. On it. And they scutter off into different directions. Pace. As you make your way across the room. It's very difficult. Because there's no lights. Clearly something's gone wrong with the power. You're experienced enough in uh, engineering to know that you know, a couple of weeks of disrepair on a place that looks as old as this is probably enough to put a few things out of order, especially if there's no one around to uh, to use things, report things, fix things. Pull out my high beam flashlight and just mark the six of, uh, of Fantano so that he's doing the pointing while I'm doing the spotting with the light. You watch, you watch Dex very, very smoothly, calmly move round corners, look at every possible angle, 
give you a nod and then move on to the next place and eventually he arrives at these two gurneys and he pulls up the smart gun in into a ready position and or, or like a stowed position and like reaches over and pulls off the um the covers and just goes that is not pleasant Oh, Ace, come and have a look at this. What do you think that. made a hole in that fella's chest like that? That's not a smart gun round. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think it would have done that. Explode. What's the other body like? Then go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exact same thing. Varying amounts of blood and bodily fluids and organs still remaining inside. Slightly different placement on the punctures, but something cut a hole in these people's chests. Fucking damn if I got any idea. Hold on a minute. Oh, oh shit, what's, what's the name of the... 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 the what? Fucking... Robot. The Private Brooks. Oh. Pace, come on. Sorry, Corporal, come on. Uh, uh, Sarge, uh, we've got a couple of bodies over here. Definitely deceased. Uh, just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not a medic. If I uh, could get Brooks over here, I'd appreciate it. Brooks, you I'm arrive at two gurneys. Interesting. Two identical wounds. Yeah, we noticed that. What would you like me to look at? Look, you're the syringe here. You tell me exactly what the fuck is going on. What made these fucking wounds? I will take a closer look. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. Uh, why don't we do our first roll of the game? This is entirely beyond your experience. It, obviously, like, the basics you can tell is blunt force trauma, not a weapon that you have seen, unless it's like some kind of grenade launcher. But really, what did this is not an answerable question. It is outside your extremely vast experience, aside from, yeah, something punched a hole. Well, from everything that I've experienced and been programmed with, this is not like any kind of xenobiology related injury or indeed any particular kind of weapon injury I've seen before. The only thing notable that I can work out is that it's the same for both, which is in itself interesting. Jesus Christ. All the knowledge of the universe and that's what you come up with, they look the same. Fucking hell. Right, okay. Uh, from what I can tell, they, they look the same, but can we at least differentiate whether the wound went in or came out from what we can see on the front of them mm. or is it just a bloodied mess you roll medical aid now great could be you know you maybe out but also maybe in there's a lot of mess oh god so we've got two it didn't go through the other there. side you can tell that. Do you know what? I, knowing Pace, I think the way that he probably finds that out is by putting his hand in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, he's just like, well, there's a fucking hole here, and just puts his hand in and goes, well, it don't go through the spine, so it wasn't no fucking mortar shell or nothing. Just, fuck, uh, hold on, man. Sarge, we got uh, two bodies here. The, the wonderful medical. 
says that uh, they look the same, but they're both dead. I can't see very well, but uh, did I hear when uh, you guys... Uh, can you transport the bodies from, from there to here? Yes, Sarge, they are on gurneys. All right, bring them over. All Rather right. than have... Oh. Rather than have you go to them, I'll bring the, the bodies over here. You can have a look. I want to ID them. I mean, have they looked for... Yeah, just bring them over. Yeah, have them bring them over. And eventually they reach you, Lieutenant Churchill. Lizzie, how are you feel? Like, I'm getting the vibe that there may be a little exasperation at the incompetence on display. The lights still aren't on. The lights aren't on. Uh, this is the hab, which I believe is where they sleep, correct? Like these are little uh, cubbies? So right right now you are uh, in the hab module, like the, the half of the station, but like technically this is the docking bay. Okay. So like you're adjacent to where they sleep, yes. Yeah, okay, so I'm not feeling super confident that the lights are out. It's dead silent and they found two bodies right as we got in. So as soon as they roll them over, the first thing I do is I don't even look at the wounds. I look at their faces. Faces are contorted and anguished. Do I recognize either of them? Mm, I don't think so. No. You could probably... Uh, you know, check their tags. You know, they've they've got lab coats on. Um, they were scientists. Uh, none that you recognize. So how how long exactly between the time it was reported and in our arrival here? It has been a couple of weeks. So they okay. are not pleasant to smell. Everything here is a bit stale. But now they've been wheeled closer. Like, there's de there was definitely a tang in the air that uh, you have found the source to. There's like a sigh of relief, almost like a body decompressing as I check the tags, see who they were, and uh, move over to the chest wounds. Mm -hmm. Aside from what is self-evident about the decomposition about who these people might have been there's not really anything going on the uh the lights flicker a little bit on and then off again i uh i check in with my um the to the two pairs of of marines that i asked to secure the door i check in and if there if it's all clear then i have I'll, I'll move on from there. Yep, everyone is waiting patiently at their points and telling you that everything seems to be clear. All right. You see the flash of uh, torches moving around. Old man. Yeah. Hey, it's not. Won't you see what you can do about getting these lights on? Yeah? As soon as possible, it's hard. All right. Do you need anybody with you? Or you... Uh, no, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. All right, call it in if you need anything. We'll do, Zod. Try to get you some light over here, Lieutenant. No, it's uh, oh, just wanted uh, to make sure Zod. this uh, place was secure first before we proceeded with any other operation. Just, just yes. A point of notice, if you don't mind, Zod. Uh, I noticed that the hole in the people didn't go all the way through. It doesn't look like I didn't see any like shrapnel or nothing in there. But I ain't no, you know, medic person or whatever. It is, but. They're like little, I don't know, piñatas or something. Anyway, we'll see you in a minute. I take the, this is the first time I actually take a look at the, at the bodies. I'm, I'm concentrating on, you know, my men, they say it's, this room is secure. So now I'll, I'll take my first look at the bodies. Now that everyone has seen them, like, yeah, there's, there's nothing, must have been nothing pleasant about how these people went. This was clearly painful for them, uh, and somehow, eventually, they made their way in here. And then they were abandoned. Like, these people have not been touched in weeks. I think everyone should take one panic.
I've seen all kinds of ordnance, all kinds of wounds made in battle. I've seen it. Um, decapitations, amputations, I've seen all of it. I've never seen anything like this. If this was... I mean, my first instinct is to say that someone made them swallow an explosive device. But if that were the case, it would have blown out their back, too. This is yeah. only blown out the front. It's like a... like a... Uh, like a Claymore mine. Only went one way. Not right about this. No scorch marks either. So it was an explosion. No burns, no singes, nothing like that. Something was inside of them and came out of them explosively, but with no explosion. Um, you can tell like now that I'm looking at the wounds, it's more of like a fascination and I'm touching their bodies to see like how the flesh moves and do I notice anything when I'm doing that? Like, is there any remnants that is not what you would expect from a human? Like, is it just fleshy bits flopping about? It is, in fact, just fleshy bits. Okay. There's, like, a variety of different markings on their bodies. Yeah, there is nothing unusual. Like... Yeah, there's a normal amount of decay as far as you're concerned. Like, you know, you press in a finger, there's no elasticity anymore to the skin, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, this is just strange and grim. There's nothing out of the ordinary aside from these wounds. This is new. I have never heard or seen of anything like this. I agree. It's unusual, definitely. Especially in its consistency between the two people. Also, Sergeant, I saw the blood all over Pace's hands. Where do you think that came from? What do you mean? He, uh, rooted around in one of the injuries. He rooted around? He learned as much as I did. I mean, he day, had Brooks right still... there with him. If, if, if it wasn't safe, I'm sure Brooks would have said something. We don't know what we're dealing with. Don't you think it's a little dangerous to be sticking your hand inside a wound you don't understand? It is inadvisable, but he did it before I could stop him. I just shake my head and I look back down and... Um, I'm, I have no idea what to say about this, but this is not... Anything I've read about, anything I've seen, or anything I have heard about. I'm really concerned at the silence that this station has. Do you hear anything? No. And it definitely is uh, what uh, maybe a novelist would call a deafening silence. It's too... <laughs> goddamn quiet these bodies have been here for weeks and they weren't moved they weren't buried they did nothing they were put over here as if the others wanted to be as far away from them as possible what's the next rooms after this we're gonna head into arrivals which is due south we're gonna clear that one and then clear the gym and the canteen and we'll keep going from there. I got uh, able to pace on the uh, on the lights. We're, we're we're working on it. And I show uh, Churchill the map there, and I show her going to storage, supply, security, maintenance. After we clear those rooms, we can hit the power banks, and hopefully, we can get this station back up. At least the lights on and the water running. Lights would help. Brooks, can we get some sheets for them? I'll see what I can scavenge. Pace, you're on lights, and uh, do you do you head like just naturally towards where the power bank room is? Bit of a track, would there but... be a 
like I said, would there be like a backup power for the shuttle though? So yeah, that I that was uh, I guess my next question. Yeah, there's probably like a a bank of uh, stuff on the wall, various um, you know uh, switches and uh, connections that you could probably really easily access in here. Um, yeah, in which case, I'll secure this room first, so we've got a full view of what we're looking at before we go on to like the corridors and storages and, and what have you. Hmm. Okay, yeah, you reach out with your hand, you realize that it's covered in gore, and you just like, yeah, you wipe it on your mm-hmm. uniform. Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, Private Quinn, Private Quinn, are you there? Yes, Corporal? If, uh, if I'm getting over to doing the, the power here, if you could head over to the comms p- panel and see where we're at with uh, communications and what have you, so I'd be appreciated. Of course, Corporal. I'll let you know. And you get to work on the power. This thing doesn't seem to have been touched much either, but in a probably a good way. This will be a very easy fix. Let's roll your heavy machinery. You, uh, you realize that someone has just thrown this switch, like the big, the big main switch, and like, you can just turn that on and then you'll have some kind of light, emergency, whatever, it'll be illuminated in here. So you throw that switch and then you hear a massive sparking sound, and the only light you see is stars in your eyes for a little bit. Uh, who's that? Oh, is that you, Fantano? It's Brooks. Uh, were you hit by anything? What do you mean, was I hit by anything? No, it was a fucking generator. Does it seem like it was just like a flash that, that disorientated him and he's otherwise okay? Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty standard human uh, visual response to, you know, be temporarily blinded after a, a flash of that especially after being in the dark so yeah he'll be fine yeah cursory looks him over seems like you're alright just uh dazed just uh dazed fucking hell like, I tell you what you'll be fine within the minute over. what what what'd you, what'd you say You'll be fine within the minute. Just, I guess, perhaps don't throw that switch again. Or if you want to throw it, I'll do it. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now, kindly, would you do me a favor and fuck off? With pleasure. There's a smirk as Brooks turns and leaves. Oh, right, okay, let me have a look. Pace, you here over your radio. Um, this is when I've tried to get to comms, tried to figure out whatever's going, but... All of the doors are welded shut. Say that again. The doors are welded. We are stuck in here. All of the doors are welded shut. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, Excuse me, Sarge. It seems that uh, our exit has been restricted due to welding of uh, the sheet material of the doors. All right, Marines, gather on me. And I go to that, uh, the doorway that is on the right-hand wall or the, mm-hmm. the eastern wall. Yeah, but yeah. Now that door is welded, is that correct? Yes, that one is, you can see like uh, the, the, the melted metal and solder in, in the center of the kind of uh, pressure doors, okay. clearly done from the other side. Seems as though... Uh, Whoever was here before us welded these doors shut. The doors to the shuttle and uh, dock, the doors to the shuttle dock have been welded. That's not the weirdest part. The weirdest part is they have been welded from the other side. So they were trying to keep something out that was in here. Now, with that information, 
want us all to proceed even more cautiously than we have been before. And I previously told you because it seems like whatever was here was it scared the, uh, the inhabitants. Enough so that they needed to quarantine this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut through this door. We're going to head directly north and we're going to sweep from the top to the bottom. So we start with storage. And I hold up my my PDAT. Start with storage and make our way down. Eventually ended up ending up in the power banks. See if we can't get power restored to this entire facility and or see what caused the power outage in the first place. All the while we are doing that, we are looking for survivors. Remember, job number one, survivors. Job number two, aliens. Job number three, science stuff. In that order. Are we clear, Marines? Yes, Sarge. Hi, sir. All right. Now, who's got the cutter? I got it, Sarge. All right. Get us through this door. We'll do, Sarge. Pace, old man, you get to work starting to cut the door. This will take a short while. Uh, this has not been done uh, with with any grace, and you're doing it from the wrong side. But, you know, slow and steady wins the race. You'll get through this eventually. But now you're really close to the door, you realize that there are dents and scratches on the metal um, on this, you know, on, on, on the panels that uh, you're in, in closely inspecting now, lit up by your cutting torch. Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, Sarge! Put the torch down. What well, is it? I just want to draw your attention as I've been uh, cutting here. I realize that if you see, look, there and there. Seems to be some scratches or marks or something. I ain't never seen anything like that, and I've been on many a bug hunt. Well, we expected encounters with uh, other life forms other than humans, so keep cutting. We'll uh, figure it out as we go. No worries, Sod, but just yeah. remember they're on our side of the door, which means they're in this fucking room somewhere. Pace, you look out behind you, and from somewhere in the room, you hear a clatter. The fuck was that? It was deadly silent again. Brooks slowly draws his pistol. You see a metal pipe slowly roll out into the corridor made by the boxes. Pace, get back to work on that door right now. Yes, sir. Double time it. Fantano, Dexter. I want you watching the corners. Everybody else on the door. Make sure you got your guns ready. Yes, Sarge. If you like, I could go inspect the source of the noise. No, no, no. You're right here with me. Aye, sir. This cutting will probably take about 15 minutes. This is not a light door. When that noise happens, I'm going to have take my flashlight out and I'm just going to do a methodical scan of like, I'm just going to go from floor to ceiling, just looking around because a pipe doesn't just move on its own. There's something to be said for knowing what is going on. Maddox, this is a rock and a hard place situation. You've been in places like this before and these go bad quickly. You're on the wrong side of the room. You have your exit, but it's through whatever noise that is. Take another stress.
Lizzie, however, you are being methodical, as you said. And you don't hear a clatter this time, but you catch movement quite close to the transport. You're not really sure, sure what it is. It's just like something looked like a limb disappeared behind a box near the transport. Like a foot. Very quietly, I say, by the transport. And then I'm going to grab my motion tracker. I am 314 motion tracker. And pull that out and see if I can find movement in that area. Hmm. You realize that there is someone, Private Beckett, pilot, still on the transport. And you can, in fact, see a little dot moving towards it. Um, Sarge, I need you, I need you to look at this. I don't even bother with the comments. Private Beckett! Sergeant. I need you to vacate the vehicle right now and get your ass over here on the fucking double. Yes. Uh, not sir. Yes, Sergeant. We got this. What do you need? Bring something with me, or...? No, get your ass, just your ass, over here now! On the double. And you hear, in the distance, a clang, 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 as she moves through the transport. Fantano, get over there and grab him! Go over there and get his ass over here, you help! Fantano, like, double times it across, like, clearly checking every which way. And then there's like a distant scuffle. And silence for a little bit. I, I look at uh, Churchill. What do you what, what do the, you see? What is the tracker showing me? There's like a little mess of dots together. There is a little bit of movement, but there appears to be three all in the same place. There are three now, and I don't... What is this? I've never seen this before, and I'm going to turn the... Two of those are your Marines. Oh, okay. The, the, those... You sent the Marines in. I guess there's three? So do I not see the other dot then anymore? Uh, sorry, yes. So you see... Uh, three of those are your Marines. I miscounted. One of them is a fourth dot that you cannot... Uh, you know, okay. count for. How big is this fourth dot? Same as all the others. Okay. Are all your men here? Are we missing a man? Who is I that? Look around. Sergeant, Lieutenant, uh, there's a kid here? A what? A child. Um, a, a, a young man. Fantano, get over there and see what the fuck he means. Do you see what, are you seeing what they're seeing? I'm... Uh, Yes, Sarge. There's, they're, they're holding on to a kid. It's. I, I, I don't know where he came from. What's your name, kid? And then, like, you hear a distant conversation. Uh, and then the boots uh, and, like, some struggling of this kid slowly comes into view. And you see it a young man uh, in tatty clothes. And. Yeah, being held, like, under the arms, feet struggling by your marines. Get off me! Get- I don't- I want to leave! Get me on the ship! Put him down! Don't carry him like that! Bring his ass over here right now! Uh, yes sir, yes such. Uh, and then they just kind of lump the, the kid to his feet in front of you. And he yanks off- the, the 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 hands from his shoulders. He's like, "Who are you?" Well, my name is Sergeant Felix Maddox. I'm here to. Uh, we're here to help. Can you give us any information as to what got what went on here? 
Felix Maddox. I, I, I haven't talked to anyone in weeks. What? What? Are, you're you're here to help? Yes, we we received a, well, they received a distress call and sent us out here to sweep and clear the area to make sure any civilian lives were uh, protected and secured. And I see we have, you are one of them, so. Oh, it's kind of good to see. You took your sweet time, but. Uh, yeah. What the hell happened here? Things got really messed up really really quickly I don't I've been trapped in here for a couple of weeks so I don't know I don't know where my dad if he's okay you've been trapped in here in the docks yeah yeah any idea why they welded the doors shut from the other side. Yeah, I think that was my dad. He threw me in here when it all started going down. What's your name, son? I'm 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 Killian. Killian? Killian what? Uh K Killian Hark Harkness. My, da all right. my dad's Ben. That's yeah, Ben Harkness. Uh, Lieutenant Barrier Churchill. Those names mean anything to you guys? No. No. All right. So uh, you have no idea why they would weld someone in here, or weld you in here like this. Are you dangerous? I mean, no. Are you contagious? It wasn't a disease. It was like an animal attack. And he point like gestures over to where the gurneys used to be. Uh-huh. And it's like I think they were the first ones. You mean there's an more? animal? I'm sorry, I... Lieutenant, please. So there's more than just those those two with that kind of injury? I assume so. I heard a lot of screaming. I heard a lot of running. I couldn't get out. I, I, I tried. I, I can, I, I can take apart most of the things on this spaceship in like, ten minutes flat. But this is, I mean, this is a, a dock. It's sealed shut. Like there's no, there's nothing. Pressure. How long has it been this quiet? Probably a, a week or so. I really, I lost track of time. Sorry. Yeah. Don't forget to check his chest. Make sure there's no explosives or nothing. <clears throat> I can give him a medical checkup if you like. Brooks? This is Brooks. He's our medical officer. He's just going to give you a check and make sure you don't get any permanent damage and you don't have anything that's uh, contagious or going to... Well... Do you know what happened to those, uh... I saw you point over there where they used to be, but we, we found those two bodies there with their chest coming out of them. You know what did that? I wasn't there for it. But I heard that something came out of them. So you didn't see what happened to those two? Not, not personally. I, I, I just heard that they were... They were being... Uh, normal going around their, their normal day and then everyone just kind of freaked out they 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 freaked out there was blood everywhere and like the the higher ups they had to like uh, separate them and figure out what was going on and the the the, the medic uh, she couldn't do anything about it they, your medic is synthetic uh no she mm, she's called sunny but um, well, ours is, so they might be able to find something that yours didn't. Can you give them? A, would you mind if uh, Brooks here gave you a once over to make sure you don't get any permanent damage? Yeah, sure. Can we? Can I in, in private? Almost through, Sarge. 
nice face. Yes, uh, totally fine. I'll, I'll go with you. If you want to join us, Lieutenant. I'm studying this young man. Mm-hmm. Does he I- look shaken? Does he look scared? Yes. So I hear the Sarge ask me that question. I'm just going to take a step towards the kid. Are you okay? I really want to know what happened to my dad. Well, well f- we're, we're trying to get the comms back up. That's our first order of business is to get out of here, get to the power, get the power back on, and get everything uh, in the station working again, and then we can work on comm systems and that that sort of thing. I, I can help you. I can I can I can take you there. Uh, there's yeah, there's a couple of easier ways other than going through storage. All right, Let's spend a lot of time in there. We'll follow your lead, but first, I pull Brooks aside. I kind of grab him close so no no one but him can hear. I lean in. Make sure that this kid doesn't have anything. Uh, I guess inside of him. Okay. I'll take extra I mean, care. We're here to save lives, but my Marines come first. You know what I mean? Hmm. We have to ensure that he was sealed in here for his protection and not in order to protect from something he might be carrying. Exactly. All right. I, uh, I like, wave us, like, usher us over to the... I'm guessing to the shuttle would be the only place to get some privacy, right? <laughs> Yeah, probably. That's the the best idea. And uh, yeah, he he kind of looks a little bit awkwardly at you, Maddox, uh, is like, can just me and Brooks? Is that okay? No. Oh, oh, you don't want me? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I want to. I. Can I just you, turn around? You can be nearby. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Take him in there. I'll I'll wait by the entrance of the shuttle. When I get to work, I, uh, like, checking his pulse. I imagine that there's a certain, there's certain neat tricks that he can do, like checking blood pressure by just, like, holding the arm and, like, just Mm -hmm. feeling it and things like that. And it's just going through the standard procedures and just checking everything normally. But when it comes to listening for breathing and things like that, he spends a little bit more time than normal listening and just, like, is there any, anything unusual about this at all? This kid seems pretty normal to <laughs> to, uh, to initial uh, investigation. Like everything seems like blood pressure is perhaps a little bit high from stress, but uh, that's nothing you weren't expecting. Heart rate, normal, uh, everything. Um, and until it gets to his chest when you're you're feeling around for uh, bumps or any sign of abnormality and it doesn't appear that there's anything dangerous in there but you notice a reaction from him and there is a moment where you catch each other's eye and you realize that this child is synthetic. Ah. Does he... Is it like a mutual recognition? He knows and he knows I know, that kind of deal. Yes. Ah, I understand. Explains how you're able to survive for so long. I thought perhaps there was food in cargo crates or something. Uh, he does say, oh, well, there is actually a crate full of all the food I could find. But, yeah, I don't, I don't need it. I see. Well, I can give, definitely give you a clean bill of health. 
I'm I'm safe. Just I don't like talking about it with new people. Doctor patient confidentiality I think is mostly acceptable in this circumstance. I may need to tell my uh sergeant at the very least. He looks disappointed when you say that. This is a complicated tactical situation. I have to make the best choices for everyone involved. Telling the sergeant will help him to be absolutely sure that you're not carrying anything infectious. You'll be left more alone this way. He silent for a short while, and then over the radio you hear some success from Pace. He has made it through the door. All through, all through. That's a repeat on that. I got through to the corridor, everyone. I assume you all heard that. Hope that uh, uh, examination is coming along. We're gonna get the hell out of here soon, so wrap it up. Give me your, give me the results as soon as you're ready. Hi, sir. And I will lean and say, your father is he or no. Okay. Um. We have the wherewithal to. I'm Brooks. We have the wherewithal to, you know, take these steps to protect you. Seems like a competent man who can take care of himself. Yeah, he was. He was a really good dad. He is a really good dad. Can we go? Yes. Uh, we'll get to it. We're going to do our best. Our primary mission here is to recover civilians alive. So. We'll see what we can do. Cool, go do that. If there's anything that you can tell us about the events that led up to this, any information will be helpful. Currently we're working in the dark in terms of what exactly we're dealing with. Yeah, I don't... I don't know anything else. Right, well, if anything comes to you. Okay. Stand up and straighten my, uh, my jacket and head outside. What's, uh, what's the verdict there, Doc? Good mental health, sir. Um, it's a matter of some discretion. Uh, the boy is synthetic, uh, which I think works out well for us in that it's highly unlikely he could be carrying any kind of pathogen, um, have any kind of, you know, he's not likely to suffer any similar fate to our friends on the gurneys over there. He didn't want it to be widely known, so... I just thought yeah. I would tell you. <clears throat> now, uh, I don't know if this question is offensive or indelicate, or whatever you would choose to describe it, but what model is it? He, I guess. Um, I'm afraid I'm not sure, sir. Uh, it would... It's not any model that I recognize from any, uh, hyperdyne lines. Um, I do recognize those by sight. Um, it could be one of the lines that has custom design elements, you know, made to order, that kind of thing. Considering he has a father who he refers to as a father, it seems like perhaps his father ordered him. All right. Just want to know if we have to worry about it. If it's an older model, then, then uh, we might have to have a discussion, but it seems like a newer one, so... I can keep what do you think? for anything unusual. Um, it should be you fine. Think we tell the tell the squad or keep it to ourselves. Ideally, for his sake, it would be preferable not to. But I understand that if necessary, you may have to tell them. It is up to you. All right. I see no reason to tell him. Just regard him as another another survivor until the time that we can, we need to reveal it if, if necessary, so. All right, Ace almost got the door open, so let's get out of here and, hey kid, 
Yeah? What's your name again? Killian. Killian. What's your first name? Yes. Uh, sir? You, you're a civilian. Uh, you, you yeah. can call me Felix, if you'd like. Oh. Yeah, I do like. Or Sergeant, Felix. if that makes you feel better. Sergeant Felix. That works. Or Sergeant Maddox, if you're going to go that route. Oh, right. Uh, I like Felix. Good enough. So, Killian is what I call you then? Yeah, yeah. All right. Killian, lead the way. We're going to get out of here and we're, you're going to show us how to turn the lights back on. Maybe even get my ass a hot shower. All right, Killian at all times, you are not to be more than four feet away from me. Do you understand? Yes. You will listen to me at every, everything I say, you will take as the word of God. Do you understand? If I say duck, you duck. If I say jump, you jump. Got it? Got it. All right. Beckett, Win, Fantano, you're on point. Dexter, you're you're taking up the rear with that big gun. Yes, Sarge. Looking good doing it. <laughs> he gets ready. And yeah, you watch Win go in first with Fantana. And they're sweeping this corridor. And it seems like there might be some sort of motion sensor in here because there is a low level of light that kind of flickers on and it is not too badly illuminated in this corridor. Emergency lights are still working then. <clears throat> Seems that way. <clears throat> All right, and we're gonna go straight, straight up forward. Ignore the first right, take the second right. You watch as Fantano and Wynn kind of uh, take the point and stand either side of this, this door that you pointed to. And you're not too far back. And Wynn grabs the handle, slowly opens it. So next to... Uh, where Fantano and Wynne are opening this door is a a kind of screen that is kind of flickering on and off as it is um, as it is uh, like receiving and then losing power and Wynne kind of jumps back looking at this screen. And you hear Fantana go, uh, when get on the door, we've got a job to do. And she just kind of points above his head. And you watch as out of nowhere, a skeletal tail bursts through his chest and out of nowhere a thing appears to change colour from flickering to a deep black as it unfurls on top of him and it clicks and retracts its tail whipping it above and starts to stalk towards wind. Light it up! You see a couple of hits hit like find a, a hole in the armor of whatever this thing is and 
it does seem to take damage, but it does not seem to care. You you let off some very hefty sounding um, rounds from this hand cannon, but in your oh, yeah, in it's, your it's hands, a revolver. <laughs> it, well, yeah, but it's it's not subtle. This magnum, and you uh, you also find some marks. You are watching small chunks of this thing flick off into the uh, into the corridor. I think you see, like, as, as he's firing, like, he starts just center mass as he's, like, looking over this thing and trying to work out anatomy and, like, potential weak points and then, like, sort of move up, up to the head and then sort of is, like, looking for points where, where bullets will actually hit once he realizes that a lot of them aren't getting through. Hmm. It's, like, these rapid kind of reassessments of, like, where he should be targeting. Yeah, you watch you slightly readjust yourself yeah, after every shot. Gotcha. So judging by what I've seen done to it so far, does it seem like the guns are doing anything to it? Marginally more than throwing rocks. Okay. And it it's does seem stall hard. Okay, so it is doing something. Yes. I'm looking at it with like amazement and just there's a twinkle in my eye, there's like a twinkle in my eyes. I'm looking at this thing and I'm going to take a step forward and square up because I have a shoddy and I'm going to reluctantly aim it towards its chest and try to shoot off some some rounds at it. This is a very dangerous weapon you're holding and uh I think the wall behind it certainly gets peppered as well, but um, the you you realize the armor of this thing is getting in the way a little bit, but you do hit it, and it is slowing down a little bit. Win, fall back, fall back. Win, kind of basically falls over backwards and scrambles towards the rest of the group. Okay. It swings out and slices at um at Win and cuts a huge chunk out of her leg. And lets out the most disgusting hiss as she begins to scream and is Pulled away by Beckett. And that is when Dexter unleashes hell with the ex like coming up from behind, getting a clear shot, finally unleashing hell with this smart gun. And you watch as it starts to disintegrate under the hail of fire. And he is going at the recoil of this thing and the surprise and fear in his eyes. And green flecks cover this a sphere of this corridor. And you watch things start to melt as it slowly crawls towards Dexter, its tail whipping out, narrowly missing him. And getting a single fleck of this green stuff on his armor until it gradually collapses in a pool of its own blood and begins to melt through the floor. Holy shit. What in the ever living fuck nuggets are you scientists been up to? Immediately holster my pistol and I'm gonna take a look at Fantano. Is he totally gone or is there anything that can be done? Fantano is mouth agape, eyes wide, but not breathing. Forget him, Brooks. Take a look at Wynn. Hi, sir. 
Uh, it fucked me up. As I, I'm gonna go over to Fantano as I pass Brooks. I'm like, get the fuck out of my way, Tim, man. And I take the dog tags off Fantano. Put them on. And close his eyes. I look at Farrier, Lieutenant Farrier. Farrier is, you know, he only had a pistol. Um, but it was, it was trained at this thing. You're not sure if he fired at all, but, um, he seems to be assessing the situation the same as you are. Sir? Yes, Sergeant? I say this with all due respect. If you knew anything about what we were what I was putting my men in front of and you didn't say anything and I find out me and you were gonna have some words sir well, sergeant you don't need to worry about that I'm as surprised as you can we please Private Dexter, retrieve a gurney, get Fantano on there, take him back to the shuttle. You take a close look at this thing, and that, I think, is when we all hear the clicking and the skittering that you just moments earlier experienced from all directions. I think there's more of them. Where are they, oh, Lieutenant? Shit. Look at look at your instrument. Tell me where they are. I'll pull out my uh, motion tracker. There are a few at varying distances but three of them are closing in on you from each side. Uh, my name is Ezekiel the Third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore III on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, and Ezekiel the Third, all spelled out on Instagram and TikTok. I'm a variety uh, video game broadcaster and uh, a lover of role play. Um, role playing. I, I, I don't do much of it on my own channel, but I do like to do a lot of it on other channels. So uh, if you want to check me out, I, I'm uh, live most every day, except uh, Mondays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. If you want to come watch a stream, twitch.tv slash Ezekiel underscore I. Thanks for watching. I will go now. I, I'm Katie Peters Place. <laughs> Very smooth transition there. Um, you can catch me on Twitch at Katie Peters Place. Do it again. Terrible. Do it again. Terrible. Wow. Do it again. It was awful. I'm already bad at these. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie Peters Plays. You can catch me on Twitch at Katie Peters Plays. I have two podcasts. Katie hasn't seen that and Quantum Drive. I do a lot of tabletop. And if you search my name, you might find me in shows in the past. Uh, I really love getting to do this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to be in the alien universe. And yeah, I have all the regular social medias and you can find me, I don't know, playing horror games on my channel because I do love horror. So this is like right up my alley. This is everything. I'm horrified about things that are happening in the show, but also very excited about it. So that's me. I believe it's my turn now and go full performer mode. How's it going? I'm Valen Vane. Um, happy go lucky scamp of an individual. You can find me on pretty much every platform at Val and Vane, apart from YouTube, and then it's Thirst and Vanity. I also have a podcast called Thirsty Work, because I do sex education, mostly, um, and a variety of different games and bits and pieces, but you can find me. I am also a massive fan of roleplay and the alien world, and it's very interesting watching, playing this as somebody who doesn't know what's going on, because there's the alien nerd in me going, oh my god, this is amazing, and then there's the my character pace just being like I don't fucking clue so yeah so that's that's it 
No, I, I realized at this exact instant that by the time this show comes out, I may have had a rebrand. I've been planning to do one and I was going to do it in like the next couple of weeks. So I don't know where you can find me. Um, maybe the, the various channels will be called Mangle Pork and maybe they finally won't be. Uh, who really knows? But I do, I do Let's Plays and stuff. And I don't know what I'm playing at the moment because we're recording in the past. Right now in the past, it's Baratrauma. It might still be Baratrauma. Oh, and also you can find me on Roll For It, where I've been doing all kinds of RPGs for a billion years. And I am the GM, also known as Jirsh, also known as uh, you can. Well, you can find me at Gaming FTL on like Twitter and YouTube. Um, but if you want roleplay stuff, that's Strange Adventures on YouTube, where I do a lot of World of Darkness vampire stuff. Um, but I'm also branching out into other things. And yeah, follow me there for exciting near future announcements. And that's that's all I got. This was this was wonderful. Thank you everyone.